Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. What a fantastic end it was to the January Certainly series. Certainly was, yes. Uh, the Nifty and the Sensex extended gains for the third straight day to touch new 2017 highs. In fact, the Nifty uh, rallied about 126 points to scale 8600 in a pre-budget rally probably. Plus global queues that were supportive. So the Nifty has um, actually risen about 5% in 2017. And as we can see, it is back to the pre demonetization levels so November 8th is the day we had seen a bigger fall we are um, back to the early November levels now so demonetization losses completely recovered our gum all indices bearing IT were trading in the green so it's been a uh, good expiry 6% gains for the series I would, I would say that and I would agree and I think a lot of these traders are also carrying the long positions which is explained by the kind of rollovers that we've seen just in the last two sessions so uh, you know the last three month average rollover stand around 68 69 percent at last count this was at 315 the rollovers already were at 68 percent so i suspect the numbers will be a lot higher eventually uh, but for that we'll have to wait for the uh, the final bow copy to come and give us the final numbers but on the whole uh, well uh, it does seem based on a lot of variables that these rollovers are towards the long side considering the fact that we've also moved we've seen the nifty move above 8600 so let's take a look at what's happened in the options market today uh, we have seen uh, you know as on expected lines writing in the 8500 8, call and in addition towards the 8500 put but uh, when it comes to uh, you know your 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 maximum open interest and the range that it provides now <laughs> it is between 8400 and 8600 a narrow 200 point range uh, it will take another few days before we can actually see a distinct range but uh, it certainly seems like there's a base formation happening towards the 8400 mark and that's of course a positive for now all right, so we come to the Bloomberg Quint uh, poll of the day question where we had asked whether Nifty would end today's session. 53% had uh, expected to close above 8500, 47% below 8500. So they were divided, but clearly um, it's ended above 8500. I think the 8600 mark was taken by, uh, was, uh, it, it was a surprise for a lot of traders. But, uh, you know, we had numbers from Kotak Mahindra Bank. I su suspect this was one of those, you know, contributors to the up move in the Nifty today. That's correct, Agam. Uh, a very impressive set of um, Q3 earnings performance from Kotak Mahindra Bank. The net profit grew 38%, beating estimates 880 crores. Net interest income grew by 16%, loan growth of about 12%. No pressure on the net interest margins for this bank. Um, you know, something that was really feared in case of... Um, uh, banks so NIMS was steady at four and a half percent asset quality there was a marginal improvement versus deterioration that the street was talking about right. in the aftermath of demonetization so gross NP is at 2.42 percent versus 2.49 percent restructured loans remain unchanged from the previous quarter um, home loans and LAP division again which was feared to have been hurt the most on the back of the government's um, note recall also grew by about 12 percent on a year on year basis and about two and a half to three percent sequentially so so far so good and um, on an overall basis on all parameters it was a good performance but uh, it was other income that really saved the day for maruti yes uh, so to a certain extent the demonetization blues haven't really been as severe as expected or as what the street was going by so uh, we already know that we've seen about three and a half percent growth in volumes for maruti suzuki and based on that revenues have moved up 13 percent this is of course owing to improved realizations uh, and uh, when it comes to margins itself we have seen about a 30 basis points improvement it's the raw materials costs which have surged by as much as nearly 27 percent but that's also been mitigated by cost control as Shraddha was mentioning right now it's the other income that has lifted profits to a certain extent the other income has moved up as much as 145 percent at around 592 crores the bottom line is around uh, 1700 crores then this is a substantial contribution when it comes to the bottom line so yes the profitability has been to a certain extent owing to other income but we'll have to wait and watch for more parameters and perhaps volume numbers for this quarter which could be a worrying factor for maruti as well as a lot of the other automakers Absolutely.
absolutely uh, just to run through some of the other numbers that I, that came out let's talk about good earnings and bad earnings so for good earnings you have supreme industries uh, united phosphorus that's upl indian bank irb infra that also beat analyst estimates in terms of bad earnings you had alembic pharma and you had arvind where the uh, net profit uh, fell about 16% and the company clearly said that the demonetization hurt consumption so there's one uh, one of the few companies where we are actually seeing that negative impact coming in right and well there's no surprise then that kotak mahindra is one of the top gainers in the nifty today that's correct um, uh, 7% gains near 7% gains for kotak mahindra bank and in fact that was uh, the biggest jumps in september 2013 bosch bpcl bank of baroda and um, adani ports all of these followed with uh, near 4% climbs whereas it was bharti airtel and your it pack with pro hcl technologies infosys all of these were amongst the laggards but uh, most nbfcs were doing well today ago yes and when it comes to the broader markets as well uh, the advanced cyclical ra- decline ratio is very similar to what we saw yesterday so we had two gainers for one loser in today's day of trade among them as shraddha has mentioned we have seen some nbfcs uh, but uh, bhushan steel is the stock of the day in the broader markets which has moved up by as much as nearly 18% that is followed by infibeam corp up as much as 10.4% bharat financial inclusion also reacting to earnings up as much as 10.4% simplex infra dredging corp muthut finance as well as bajaj finance all of them uh, looking at substantial gains today in the losing end we have ruchi soya walk hard also declining of course this is owing to its losses sh kelkar now showing substantial weakness followed by ajanta pharma tata lc and ashok leland all declining but on the whole it's been a relatively good day when it comes to uh, the mid cap indices and uh, well broader markets too but uh, well it's not a really a surprise that the bsc ipo has been substantially oversubscribed now absolutely agam um, totally uh, the total subscription standard about 40 times and the retail category itself has seen a oversubscription of about 5 times but that apart we're keeping an eye out for itc that's the big earning for friday the stock closed about um, 2% higher uh, in um, uh, anticipation or ahead of the earnings so that's all from us today Um thank you for watching Boombox Quint and stay tuned for more